So our congratulations to them as we reset now and get set for our next battle. This is the men's, or excuse me, the women's team gold medal match. And this features Korea versus Belarus. Again, the world record, 231 points by Korea in Beijing back in 2008. Well, and this and is the last this time is I Belarus. believe. This is the last time that they'll use cumulative score for our team round in the Riker. So this is the last chance to set that world record. So Belarus beat Germany this week, beat Great Britain by eight, then defeated or uh, defeated uh, Denmark by four. And their lineup includes Anna Morusaba, Elena Tolkach, and Katarina Timofieva. Timofieva in the middle and Tolkach on the right. And Anna Morusaba, the archer you saw on the left. So an impressive performance this week to get to this point, beating Germany, Great Britain, and Denmark. And now they'll really have to be on their game as they face Korea, a team that defeated Poland by four, then knocked off China in a tiebreaker. And this is one tough lineup. Ki Bobe, Yuno Ki, and Shanghai Jin. You, 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 I mean, there's nothing else to say for it except that the Koreans, you would expect the Koreans to win this match. They are the strong favorites and the dominant team in this sport. You look at their track record, you look at their resume, their credentials. Korea has just been outstanding, always outstanding. And this is just another in a long line of great teams that they'll be putting out on the playing field here today. Kibo Bay. Olympic champion, Yuno Ki, dominated the World Cup circuit this summer, and Shanghai Jin has more than held her own as well. She has done very, very well. In fact, Shanghai Jin finished seventh this week in the individual competition here at the World Championships in Belek. Looks like the Koreans will be leading out, uh, and I, my guess is that Ki Bo Bay will be starting off. By the way, Denmark won on target number two. Well, that's good news. Yes. So you can win shooting on target number two. The Koreans, though, on target number one, leading off. Nine. Good nine. So Kibo Bay, who did not compete at the World Cup final in Paris. Tells you how com competitive it is on the Korean team. Nine. When your Olympic gold medalist doesn't qualify for the World Cup final in Paris. There are uh, limits to the number of yes. how many people from each country is, are eligible to go. Only two per. And you know key. With the third straight nine to start off for Korea. So nine, nine, nine. The right. Slight wind out to the right according to the wind gauge on the on the screen there. And a little bit of a headwind, it looks like. Well, right until I say that, at which point it turns around. Belarus <laughs> with a nine to start things off. I believe that was Marusova. Yes. And this is Tolkac. 34 years old. Unranked. Oh, dear. Six. And Six. it's outside our view. Although Hugh McDonald was able to spot that with his eagle eyes. There we go as the camera widens out. There's the six at the top of the screen. Timo Fieva trying to pick up her teammate and does with a nine. Yep, good nine. So they're down by three immediately. That's a dangerous place to put yourself. Bit of a hole that they're in right now. And Kibo Bay. Eight, still in the same spot. Her shot drifting off to the right just a little bit. Makes a bit of an adjustment as she comes back. We may be picking up a little bit of more wind going on. Here's Chang Hai Jin, 26 years old, ranked 19th nine. in the world, and that's a nine for her. And you know Key now. Hopefully she's moved her sight before this shot, based on the last five arrows worth of information. The Koreans are excellent with communication, from the best of my knowledge. I don't speak the language. Those are fantastic fingernails. Aren't Notice they really? That. Did it say Hello Kitty? I believe it did. I believe it did, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's an awful lot of work, I think. Uh, I'm just going to have to go by uh, somebody else's uh, 
experience on that. I, I'm sorry, I have not drawn Hello Kitty on my fingernails, I'm but not, neither have I. My guess is that it's not as easy as it looks. Takes a little bit of time. So Marusava with her shot now. Tolkach. There's a nice ten. Very good. That helps a bunch. Yeah. The Koreans actually open the door a little bit for the Belarusians to come back in with those two eights. It's a little bit surprising, a little bit unexpected. So we have to see whether or not the Belarusians can take full advantage of this. And with one more ten, they'll be tied up. It's another eight, but only a two-point deficit. They're not out of this game. It could have been worse. Oh, it could have been worse. worse. Timo Fieva with the eight after the bullseye by Tolkach. And so Belarus. Still in the match, only trailing by two, 52 to 50. As Korea breaks on top early on, probably could have had a larger lead heading into the second end. Belarus, again beating Germany, Great Britain, and Denmark to get to this gold medal match. And of course, this is old hat for the Koreans. They're used to being in these these matches. As used to as used to it as you might be, I don't think sort of the edge ever comes off. Though. I still think the nerves are always still there, aren't they? Yep. It's still important. You still need to get out there and, and do your job. And with the Korean team, there's always pressure on every arrow, every event, every match, because there's always somebody waiting in the wings. If you falter a little bit, they'll step up, take and, your place. And I don't envy them the expectation on their shoulders. And all, I said it right off the bat. I expect the Koreans to win this match. Everybody probably See, in the stands. You. Oh, yes, it's all my fault. That's it's correct. all Hugh McDonald's fault. By the way, Hugh McDonald, along with Carl Arkey, here on Bellic Beach, taking in the team medal matches here on a Sunday morning, recurve Sunday. Yeah, to continue that thought, I don't think any Korean in any match internationally is ever an underdog. Anna Marusava. Yeah, the Belarusians will start this end uh, as a consequence of their small deficit, another eight. A little bit high for the archer who shot in Sydney at the 2000 Summer Games, was in Athens at the 2004 Games, and placed fourth with her team in the 2009 World Championships in Korea. So that's good experience under her belt, for sure. Eight. Eight. Tolkach has only been competing for three years, has never medaled, has had several ninth place finishes. And Timo Fieva, also an Olympic veteran, 17th individually in London last summer. But she's high. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if that's nerves. Their group is just a little bit big. It, it looks like they're just trying a little bit too hard to me. I'm not certain. I don't see anything obvious that would cause that. Well, but the now Korean the goes and throws an eight up high too, so there might be something that I don't see. And that's a few eights for Kibo Bay. There's a good nine. Good height still out to the right for the Koreans. There was talk at one point, yeah, that definitely is Hello Kitty. There was talk at one point, um, they've extended, compared to yesterday, this field is a little bit longer. And so now there's a little bit of an open space at the back end where the wind can take the arrows for the last 10, 15 meters. And there was a little bit of talk about whether or not that was going to factor in uh, the sensation of what the wind is doing will be quite slight on the archers. They're they're really well protected. It's a it's a really great venue actually for shooting from. <laughs> World archery putting together a terrific venue here on Belek Beach, as they do everywhere we go. Juan Holgado, Juan Carlos Holgado and his crew. He's amazing at what oh, he does. The world's most interesting man. <laughs> There's an interesting shot by Tolkach. Now they're starting to get it dialed back in. <clears throat> Tough start in this end. Shooting eight, eight, and seven. But now picking it up with a couple of nines. Oh, and there's a nice X. There we go. Oh. All right, that's what they're looking for. Timo Fieva coming through with doesn't, the 10. Doesn't exactly put pressure on the Koreans, but it certainly say, it says, hello, we're back. 
So Kibo Bay picking things up a little bit personally. The Koreans don't have a 10 yet. Ten. There we <laughs> are. <laughs> From your lips to their ears. And Shanghai Jin with the 10. And it's a good one. It's right in the X-ray. So Yuno Ki will try to emulate her teammate. Nine. And comes close. <laughs> so smiles on the faces of the Korean archers. <laughs> Five point lead. That's pretty solid. But there's still 12 arrows left. And a lot can happen. 12 arrows in a team roll. Especially here in Bella Cantalia, where there were more misses and more shots not taken during this past week. And I think, well, just in talking to a lot of the folks who are competing this week, it's the most they've ever seen. It was spectacular. It was interesting to... And these are the world's best, too. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, you know, from personal experience, there were a couple of shots where you let go, or I let go, and in the team round. And uh, then I was told it was an eight or better. <laughs> and I was okay. absolutely shocked because the sight wasn't even close to the target button. And I, I, that's why we practice. Right? You practice so much so that your body can correct it when things are just going crazy. It's still, I'm, I'm surprised. I've heard stories. I didn't see it personally, but I've heard stories of some of the Koreans shooting misses or two. And these are just numbers that you don't expect from really top shooters. Well, there was a compound score in a semifinal match of 88 to 79, and that got, I believe it was Orlic from Croatia into the gold medal match with 88 points, an 88-79 victory. That tells you something right there. And so for those who don't know, that's out of 150. Yes. So that's about half of what the normal score might be. So there were misses. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, the compounds, they had a bigger <laughs> disadvantage because they only, their targets only go out to the five ring, mm -hmm. right? So we, as recurves, can shoot fours, threes, twos, and ones. A compound, if you're, once you're outside the blue, it's a zero. You're in another universe. That's yeah. a solid end. The Belarusians have really settled down into themselves. This is good. And there. that's another bullseye for Timo Fieva, who finished off the last end with a bullseye. A couple of nerves early on, but it looks like they're settling in. So now it's up to the Koreans <laughs> to do what they do best, which is just shoot tens. Starting to bring it home. At a five point lead midway through the match. Trying to build upon that if they can. <laughs> Raising the stakes. Shanghai Jin with another bullseye. And now Yuno Ki. First two arrows in this end, they've doubled their 10 count. More than doubled it. And there's an eight for Yuno Ki. Doesn't matter, they still picked up a point. They've now got a six point lead. With an eight, they've extended their lead. So now it is back in the court of Belarus. All they can do is what they can do. They have to completely ignore what the Koreans are up to and just keep shooting good arrows. Nine, Nine for Hana, who's been competing for about 14 years now, veteran. Control what you can control and let everything else go. And here is Tolkach, who will get her first medal ever today. Was hoping for gold. In a tough spot right now with her teammates, though, after that eight. Timo Fieva called upon once again to try to come up with a 10 to keep her team in contention. Oh, well, that's another eight. At this point, it feels like it's just slipping away a little bit. The New York Yankees had Murderer's Row. The Koreans have Three terrific archers in this lineup right here. Kibo Bay, an Olympic champion, leading off, followed by Chang Hai Jin, who's ranked 19th in the world. They have three of the top 20 archers, but there is a surprising shot. A little bit of a slip, a little bit of a falter. We've got a six point lead. You can afford a little bit of that, but a little I bit of a cushion. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it all that often. 
There's a little bit of a gust coming on that you can feel. Nine. And that one drifts to the left a little bit. So it's a six point lead right now. 159, 153. That's a four point lead. One, no, sorry, it's a six point lead. I was going the other way for some reason. You had me worried I was going to take off my shoes and do some counting. Fingers and toes to try to keep score. 18 arrows have been shot. Belarus with a score of 153 out of a possible score of 180. And Korea in good shape right now. 159 posted on the scoreboard. And a couple of shots they'd like to have back. But again, as Hugh McDonald mentioned, when you have that kind of cushion, that kind of lead, you can afford to give a point or two back. Well, and they didn't actually. They picked up a point. I yeah, think, they the did Koreans. pick up a point. Yep. Uh, I don't think there are really the the seven was a bit of an oops. The seven for the Koreans was a bit of an oops. But I'm not sure that anybody would really take too many shots back. They've been consistent shots. Some of them haven't been fantastic. Been a lot of eights uh, on the part of the Belarusians, which isn't ideal. Uh, you know, I think that's tension. But I, I don't think that those are. I don't think that they would characterize them as mistakes. So there was one shot in the six ring as the first arrow, and that might have just been a, let's see what this guy is up to. Might have nerves, don't know, I can't say for certain. But by and large, I think the, the Belarusians are shooting consistently, just not as well as they would like, or as well as the Koreans. Let me ask you this, Hugh. How much of an intimidation factor is there, or is there one at all, when you're going up against the Koreans? The team is strong. Again, like the wind, it can be a little bit freeing because nobody expects you to win. So you just get to walk up and shoot arrows. And if you lose, well, you lost to the Koreans. If you win, that's a big deal. Now you've done something. So depending on how you handle it in your own psychology, there can be, I'm, personally, I'm not terribly intimidated by anybody. They're people. Everybody's people, the archers that I've met, have by and large been gracious and fun and nice people. So they're not scary at all. They're absolutely they're good shooters, but everybody down on that field is a good shooter. Everybody down on that field knows how to shoot lots of good tens. And deserves respect. Ten. But not Ten. No. Absolutely. Uh, you have to respect every opponent at this level. You have to be on your game. You have to be coming out to shoot those X's and execute your shot. Another X. Oh. Oh. Jan has been shooting a lot of times. Another one is now a key. It's another two points, so it's now an eight point lead with three arrows to go. That's pretty tricky to come up of. So methodically, Korea pulling away. Belarus. Just three more shots. Anna Marusova with her final shot of this Gold medal match at the World Championships. Yeah, this Belarusian match, it strikes me as a solid but tense match. They've, they, they've got a lot of eights that are a little ways out. Uh, and that just seems to be, I think that's an eight. Uh, for me, if they were a little bit more used to being on this stage with this attention, the announcing, all of the noise and, and Okay, that goes on. Yeah. Good finish. That's a great way to finish the World Championships. Timofeeva is outstanding for Belarus in this competition. But Belarus having to go up against Kibo Bay, Shanghai Shin, Yunoki. And Shanghai Shin. He's been in that 10 ring a couple of times. Ends Another up eight. in the 8 ring. Final arrow for the championship of the world. So this is it. To wrap it up, four or better gets it done. Yuno Key draws it back. In, this, in these conditions, this is pretty much no brainer. Yuno Key delivers. Winning shot. Korea comes away with a gold medal in the women's team competition, defeating Belarus. And let's hear for Belarus. So Belarus will set up for the world championship. And the Koreans will go home with yet another gold medal. Kibo Bay, Yunoki, Shanghai Jin.
Navigating their way through the field here, the World Championships in Pelican Italia, which has absolutely been just, aside from the win, it's just a beautiful, beautiful location. Just wonderful to be here on the south coast of Turkey along the Mediterranean Sea and just a great resort community. I, I, rec I would recommend this area to anybody who's looking to get away. <laughs> I think it's a it's a good time, especially if you're the type of person who likes to sit on a beach and just soak up the sun. Read a book. Absolutely. We uh, play some golf, play some tennis. We have a couple of resorts, so I don't know if there's a whole ton of stuff for people to get in there and do. I don't know what other historical sites they do, obviously. I'm not sure. Uh, we, Ephesus. Uh, Ephesus. We need it's, to take you to Ephesus. I've heard that several times. I should yes. go to Ephesus. Yes. Let me put some emphasis on that. Ephesus. The winning style, the winning form for the Koreans as they come up with a six point victory, 212 to 206. But Korea started off strong, jumped out to a two point lead after the first end.